Well, good morning. Uh, we are the Bismarck Mandan Elks Men's Chorus. My name is Rachel Johnson, and we are so happy to be with you this morning to start off your worship service. We're going to be singing a couple songs for you just to bring you into the spirit to worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll sing two. The first one is called, Yes, He Did. Walk 
Thank you for coming and singing for us this morning. Thank you very much. We welcome you to our worship this morning. Uh, if you're a guest with us, we ask that you please sign the guest book. It's out by the front doors. And if you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you be part of us. Just let us know with an email or a phone number. Just a couple of announcements that I have. Um, Immediately after this worship, our church council will meet, and at 6, we will have our confirmation uh, program on Wednesday evening. Good morning. I am in need of some volunteers for May. I need two ushers for each service in May, and the last service is the beginning of our summer schedule, so then I'll just need two people, and that would be it. And then for communion assistance, I need two of them for both services on Sunday, May 19th. And the Elder Guild I have filled. So thank you very much. Take a peek at the Lego display in the back. It's really quite interesting to see. And um, if anybody has anything else they'd like to bring and, and display, we would appreciate that. Just bring it at any time. And the Acolyte sign-up sheet for the summer is in the back. If you haven't signed up yet, parents, get the, your, your students signed up. You only have to sign up one time, so that's not too much for the summer. It should fit right into your schedule. So make sure you check that out and sign up if you haven't already. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us have a brief silence for reflection and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for all of us. And for His sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page 16 of your bulletin. O sing Jubilee to the Lord.
um, I ended up going down to Aberdeen um, to a workshop, and it was Marty Haugen, um, uh, Mary, oh, can't even remember her name, um, and uh, another gentleman. Anyway, the three of them did the most fabulous, fabulous workshop ever. And Marty Haugen is, um, he's just such a plain gentleman. He's worked in pretty close to every church there is, I would venture to say. Um, and, and a lot of his music is in the Catholic Church, but I'm so grateful that um, the Protestants have, have grabbed onto his music. And this next tune, it's called Shepherd Me, O God. Um, it's absolutely beautiful, and um, he just did a fabulous job. And the, the evening of their concert, the last night of their concert, they did do this tune, and um, it, it says everything we need to hear.
Would the children please come forward for the children's message? Good morning. Good morning. morning. How are you? Good. You're good? Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Do you know what a shepherd is? What does a shepherd do? What does he do? It helps Jesus. The shepherd helps Jesus. What does a shepherd do? Looks after sheep, right? Yeah. How many of you have ever, ever seen a shepherd? How many have you ever seen sheep? Have you ever touched one? Yeah. No, I have never touched one before. Yeah. Well, we have a shepherd here. You want to bring the sheep? We have a sheep here. <laughs> You want to pet them? Don't scare them. <laughs> you know, Jesus tells us we're his sheep, and Jesus is our shepherd, and he guides us just like Devin takes care of that little lamb. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you ever touched a sheep before? You can touch them. Come over here. How old is that? Born on Valentine's Day. Born on Valentine's Day, February 14th. Alina, you want to touch them too? <laughs> Yeah. I think they, I think they like the, like the... Pretty calm, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can touch them. Yeah. You want to touch them? You don't want to touch them? Are you scared? No? You want to touch them? Yeah. You want to touch him too? <laughs> anyway, Jesus talks. He calls us his sheep, and he's our shepherd. He he takes care of us, and he watches over us. And so, isn't there supposed to be more sheep in there? Yeah. You guys want to come and touch them too? You may if you like. I think they're fantastic. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to matter. Okay, shall we let the sheep go now? No. No. <laughs> well, we got to have the rest. We got to finish our church. You can say goodbye to the sheep. You guys want to all sit down and we'll have a prayer, okay? Yes, I am. Okay. We're going to pray. What do we do when we pray? Yeah, fold our hands, close our eyes, and bow, their, bow our heads, right? Thank you, Jesus, for being our shepherd and that we are your sheep. Help us to let you guide us and lead us as we live our lives. Amen. Well, thank you for coming. And thank you, Devin and Bert and Lakin, for bringing the lamb. We'll continue our service at the bottom of page two. Please stand if you're able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us sing verse 1 of the hymn of praise. be with you. Please join with me in the prayer of the day, followed by Psalm 23. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along in my pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and staff, and for me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You may be seated for the lessons. The first lesson is from the fourth chapter of Acts. Peter and Paul, or Peter and John, excuse me, had been arrested the previous day because they were proclaiming the news of the resurrection to the people. In today's reading, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit so that he can proclaim salvation in Jesus' name to the religious authorities. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made their prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you. The builders, it has become the cornerstones. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Here ends the first reading. Second reading is the third chapter of 1 John. Jesus' death on our behalf is the clearest demonstration of divine love. This is the very love we share with others, not just through our words, but especially through our deeds. In sharing such love, we fulfill God's commandments. We now love by this, we know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and in action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will assure our hearts before him whenever your hearts condemn us for god is greater than our hearts 
and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments, and we do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, our song as He leadeth me, page 17 in your bulletin.
Let us all pray. Lord God, You are our shepherd. You love us. We are Your sheep. You care for us. You provide for us. And You teach us. And help us, O Lord, to look to You to guide us as we live our lives. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I think about sheep and their needs, I don't know much about sheep. We didn't have sheep when we lived on the farm that I grew up on. But we had other farm animals that we took care of. And I remember one cow in particular who had her calf out in the pasture. And I remember she must have had a hard time having her calf because that cow didn't get up for days and days after having her calf. I also remember going out to her I was about in the sixth grade, went out with water and feed every single day with two five-gallon pails, pulling them on a little red wagon. It was touch and go with that cow. We thought we were going to lose her, but with our nurturing and our shepherding, she finally recovered. And as I think about sheep this morning, I remember Jerry and Sona inviting the kids from our church out to their farm to see the young lambs. I remember we took several car loads out there and the kids had a wonderful time petting and feeding the lambs. It was a great experience for those kids and I still look at some of those pictures we took that day as they roll on my computer. <clears throat> and then as I think about sheep, I think of one of my favorite pictures of Jesus. It's a picture of Jesus carrying a wayward lamb over his shoulders. It shows us that he has gone after a sheep that is straight away. The picture shows the love that Jesus has for each one of us. And as we think about Jesus and His love and how pure it is, we tend to use love loosely in a lot of different ways. We love food and we love cars. We love sports and many other things. But God only uses love in a pure sense of the word. He loves with a love that is unconditional. A love that loves even when we don't love in return. This kind of love sacrifices for the sake of others. God's love is a pure love that goes way beyond the way we know how to love. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Today we get to see God's love in a special way. We see His love through helpless sheep, cared by a loving shepherd. In the Bible, sheep are known for wandering, unaware that they are in danger. Sheep almost always seem to require the care of a shepherd to lead them to water, and to places that are safe. And the Bible often compares us to sheep. And Jesus' knowledge of our needs is intimate and personal. I know my sheep, he says, and my sheep know me. He, know, he knew that you and I needed what only his death could provide. And he didn't look out for himself. He didn't wish us well and leave us on our own. Instead, He sacrificed His love for us 
He died to save you and me from our sins. And He defeated death by His resurrection and secured our forgiveness and eternal life. And we know, need to know that Jesus as our shepherd is always in control of everything. Everything that happens around us. Never. Not even at the cross was Jesus weighed down. His life wasn't taken from Him. He gave it up for us. He wasn't defeated, but He offered Himself as a sacrifice for you and for me. And we are always under His loving and protecting and guiding care. He knows the bad things and the hardships, that, the heartaches and the miseries that we experience in life. Our shepherd knows all of them, and he is with us, guiding and leading us. So in those situations when you feel powerless, pray, ask for God's help, ask for his guidance and direction, and let go, and let God carry you through those situations. And know that your loving shepherd is faithful, to his promises. So in good times, and in the times when you are troubled, let God's love bring you comfort and know that your shepherd, your good shepherd, walks beside us each day and will be with us forever, even into eternity. He knows our needs and he will provide for what we need. Amen.
Would you please rise as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. You'll find them on page 7 of your bulletin. Let us all share our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us all pray. Watchful God, give to your church faithful leaders who will shepherd with vision and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Abundant God, Help the people of the world to find ways to share their resources and to care for one another in their need. We pray to the Lord. Lord Knowing God, assure all who are sick that You are the God of healing and that You are present with them in their pain and discomfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord Abiding God, Sustain the dying and those who watch with them. Comfort those who grieve. And keep us united with all our brothers and sisters who have died in Your arms. We pray to the Lord. Listen now, Lord, as we pray our personal prayers in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear our prayers and receive them for the sake of the crucified and risen One, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace of the Lord with one another. We will continue our worship with our offering.
Please rise as our offering response will be the doxology. Let us all pray the prayer in the middle of page 8, our offertory prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new promise in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us all pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. You're all invited to our communion. None should be left out. You don't have to belong to this church. You're all invited to come. Today we will be taking our communion continuously. Come up the middle aisle, take your communion, go back along the wall aisle. We have substitutes for the bread and the wine. If you'd like that, just let us know. Come, for all things are ready.
For those at home taking communion, we will take our communion now. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for your sins. Would the congregation please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn you'll find on pages 22 and 23, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I know I've bored you with this before, but this is uh, uh, 
Appalachian Mountain dulcimer. Um, these uh, originated back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, down in the Appalachian Mountain area, down in the south part of the, the country, south eastern part of the country. Um, originally, they were designed after zithers from way, way back, uh, which came over from the old country type of thing. And this one I just recently got. I've got probably about 50 of these. <laughs> is that uh, hoarding? No, they're all different models. But anyway, uh, this one is a very lovely one. Um, and uh, I just love the sound of them. Uh, dulcimer uh, means sweet song. So anyway, any questions? No. <laughs> Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thine river side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill my lost demands. Could my zeal no less but no? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin would not atone. Thou must see the love alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Naked come, thing I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, see, or I die.
Thank you. 